I am more against the white supremacy than you, period. People out here talking about, oh, I'm against the white supremacy and then endorse Joe Biden. Have you seen this man? And by the way, what you all know, but most people don't know, unlike the African-American community with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community with incredibly different attitudes about different things. So now you understand why he'll say something like this. It's the same guy who said, I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. How are you okay with this? But Trump, but no, you need to look at Joe Biden first. I mean, you got the first sort of mainstream African-American yeah. who is articulate and bright and, and, and clean and nice looking guy. I mean, it's, that's a storybook, man. In these schools, we have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Their own rules. Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put y'all back in chain. Put y'all back in chain. He's talking about Mitt Romney like, like he was going to put us back in slavery. You see how he talk? But at the same time, this guy talking about chains, he should never even be mentioning that. Have y'all seen the 13th Amendment? Let's read it. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for a crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. One more time. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, pause, except as a punishment for crime. So slavery still exists in the United States right now as a punishment for a crime. And who is the guy behind the major crime bills? Do something about that cadre of young people, tens of thousands of them, born out of wedlock, without parents, without supervision, without any structure, without any conscience developing, because they literally, I yield myself three more minutes, because they literally have not been socialized. They literally have not had an opportunity. We should focus on them now, not out of a liberal instinct for love, brother, and humanity, although I think that's a good instinct, but for simple pragmatic reasons. If we don't, they will, or a portion of them will, become the predators 15 years from now. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets that society has, in fact, in part because of its neglect, created. Again, it does not mean because we created them that we somehow forgive them or do not take them out of society to protect my family and yours from them. They are beyond the pale, many of those people. Beyond the pale. And it's a sad commentary on society. We have no choice but to take them out of society. Right. The truth is, every major crime bill since 1976 that's come out of this Congress, every minor crime bill has had the name of the Democratic senator from the state of Delaware, Joe Biden, on that bill. Another thing about how uh, perspectives change over time. Bobby Rush, member of Congress, said the other day, I'm ashamed that I voted for the 94 crime bill. You ashamed of that bill? Not at all. Um, and in fact, I drafted the bill, as you remember. I know that. Let me tell you what is in the bill. And I'll let you all decide whether or not this is weak. Let me get down here a compendium of the things that are in the bill. One. The death penalty. It provides 53 death penalty offenses. Weak as can be, you know? We do everything but hang people for jaywalking. And y'all want to talk about defund the police and then turn around and endorse Joe Biden. Talking about you against the white supremacy, turn around and endorse Joe Biden. Talking about Black Lives Matter, endorsing Joe Biden does not make sense, especially since this guy will lie something that he should not even have to lie about, as in in this bill. When I marched in the civil rights movement, I did not march with a 12 point program. 
I marched with tens of thousands of others to change attitudes. So he said he marched in the civil rights movement, but he was lying. But the fact that you seek often to identify yourselves with the Kennedys and Martin Luther King and the activism of the 60s, even though your record is somewhat at odds with that, that you were not greatly involved in civil rights, you were for the war. I was not an activist. I worked at an all-black swimming pool in the east side of Wilmington, Delaware. I was involved. I was involved in what, what they were thinking, what they were feeling. I was involved, but I was not out marching. I was not down in Selma. I was not anywhere else. So you supporting this man says a lot about you and what you're trying to get me to do. The usual response is, but Trump, let's talk about Trump then. Trump signed sweeping criminal justice bill. Inmates to be released as Trump administration implements criminal justice reform. Compare and contrast that with the guy who has his name on all the crime bills, Joe Biden. Why do we skip over this? Why don't we want to admit this? I don't give a crap if you don't like him. I don't like him either, talking about Trump. But you have to live in reality in what's happening. Now, when we're talking about race, let's look at the whole white supremacy thing with Trump. Thank you. He doesn't deny them at a minimum. He said at a minimum now. When you say the party is self-destructing, what do you see as the biggest problem with the Reform Party right now? Well, you've got David Duke just joined. A bigot, a racist, a problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. And that's way back in 2000. Yes, sir. Mr. Trump, how do you feel about the recent endorsement from David Duke? I didn't even know he endorsed me. David Duke endorsed me? Okay. All right. I disavow. So you see the context? He didn't like David Duke in 2000, so it makes sense that he would say it that way. Okay, so let me tell you. I'm sitting in a house in Florida with a very bad earpiece that they gave me, and you could hardly hear what he was saying, but what I heard was various groups, and I don't mind disavowing anybody, and I disavowed David Duke. Duke and I disavowed him the day before at a major news conference, which is surprising because he was at the major news conference. CNN was at the major news conference, and they heard me very easily disavow David Duke. Now, which we did see. Now I go and I sit down again. I have a lousy earpiece that is provided by them, and frankly, he talked about groups. He also talked about groups, and I have no problem with disavowing groups, but I'd at least like to know who they who they are. It would be very right. fair to disavow a group. Matt, if the group shouldn't be disavowed, I have to know who the groups are. But I disavowed David Duke. Now, if you look on Facebook, right after that, I also disavowed David Duke. When we looked at it and looked at the question, I disavowed David. There it is on Facebook. David Duke. So I disavowed David Duke all weekend long on Facebook, on Twitter. And there it is on Twitter. Look at the Times. And Real. obviously it's never enough. Real. How would you characterize, to put this to rest, how would you characterize in more words than one uh, David Duke? Uh, David Duke is a bad person who I disavowed on numerous occasions over the years. And the one question that was asked to me, I, I guess on CNN, he's having a great time. He talked about uh, groups of people. And I don't like to this about groups if I don't know who they are. I mean, you could have Federation of Jewish Philanthropies in groups. I don't know who the groups are. He's talking about this about groups. And that's what I was referring to. But I disavowed him. I disavowed him. I disavowed the KKK. I just did the Today Show, and it was the same thing. And I said, how many right. times do I have to disavow? Do you want me to do it again for the 12th time? Well, I want it so on the I record disavowed. on this show. Uh, let me uh, follow up, okay, and then no, I'll I open just, it up to the table. Just to put it clear, I disavowed him in the past, and I disavow him now. And it was very clear that I disavowed, but they, the press doesn't want to go with it. They just love the story. Uh, and by the way, if you look at my Twitter, which took place just about the same time as that show, you'll see I disavowed. So are you prepared right now to make a clear and unequivocal statement renouncing the support of all white supremacists? Of course I am. Of course I am. Mr. Trump, Romney also talked about your position on race and the contro controversy over your failure to denounce David Duke on Sunday. You have repeatedly disavowed him since then. So he said he has repeatedly disavowed them since then, which we have seen. Already at this point, it's like, why are y'all asking me this over and over again? Are you slow? But I'd like to go deeper than that. He wants to go deeper than that, though. 
What are your views on the Ku Klux Klan and white supremacists? I, the same question. I totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. I've been doing it now for two weeks. This is you're probably about the 18th person that's asked me the question. It was very clear. That question was. It was very clear. It was also talked about in the form of groups. Groups. I want to know which groups are you talking about? You have to tell me which groups. Ultimately, he got to the Ku Klux Klan, which obviously I'm going to disavow. And by the way, if you look on my Twitter account, almost immediately after the program, they were disavowed again. You know, it's amazing. When I do something on Twitter, everybody picks it up, goes all over the place. But when I did this one, nobody ever picks it up. Take a look at my Twitter account. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Senator Rubin. How many times do I have to reject? I've rejected David Duke, rejected David Duke. Uh, I've rejected the uh, KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. All right, let me ask you about this one. Uh, David Duke announced his Senate candidacy, claiming your agenda for his own, or he essentially saying, glad that you spoke out. Are you ready before you ask the question? Newt Gingrich said, every Republican should repudiate this guy, I no did. matter what it takes. And I do. Are you ready? Would I you wanted, support I a Democrat over David Duke, if that was what was necessary to defeat him? I guess, depending on who the Democrat, but the answer would be yes. Look, the answer is, uh, as quick as you can say it. In fact, I want to answer you before you totally even ask the question. Because right? yeah. last time, with another person in your position, I did it very quickly, and they said he didn't do it Fast enough. Rebuked. Is that okay? Rebuked. Rebuked. Done. Done. Put yourself in his shoes. If you told somebody that you disavowed that many times and they asked you the question again, how would you feel about that person? What would you think? Especially all throughout the month of March. Been doing this since the year 2000. And they bring it up in July. Something's not right, but then there's something that's not registering because y'all seen this. Y'all have the same access to information that I have, and you still come up with the conclusion that the news is telling you. About the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. That's 2017. So he's still having to do it, and now he got to mix it up a little bit because y'all didn't hear it the first time he said it, or the first few times he said it in the simple way. Racism is evil. Again. And those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs. Look how he had to switch it up on you. Racism is real bad, evil. Including the KKK. Including the KKK. Watch it. Neo-Nazis, uh -huh. white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. He shouldn't even have to do that at this point. He already did it. And now he's spelling it out for you. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. In one voice. Are now he's doing it in 2019. Our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. Everybody should be worried at this point, but that's not, that's not the case. You should be looking at the media like, man, y'all tripping. We, we can very quickly. We can and, and look, and look, more recently, September 2020, it's still being brought up. Watch this. Do that, but I'm not, sending no, I'm, the National I'm, Guard. It would be over. There'd be no problem. Okay. But they but don't want to accept the National Guard. You have repeatedly we, criticized the, the vice president for not specifically calling out Antifa and other left-wing extremist right. groups. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups? Now, this is the same guy right here from March 3rd. He should not be asking this question. Nobody should be tolerating him asking this question or cheering him on as if he's doing something good. At this point, it's retarded. Let's look back. Let's look. But Duke, on Sunday, you have repeatedly disavowed him since then. But I'd like to go deeper than that. What are your views on the Ku Klux Klan and white supremacists? I totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. I've been doing it now for two weeks. This is, you're probably about the 18th person that's asked me the question. It was very clear. How slow can you go? And watch what he say. We're going back to September 2020 now. And to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities. As we so he's telling him to say that they need to stand down we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to Because he's already told him that he disavowed way back when and said it multiple times. Watch it now. 
to do that. Specifically, do it. Well, I would ahead, say sir. I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what do you what are you, you what are you saying? I'm, I'm, the stupid left versus right thing. But, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and, like and right wing. White supremacists and right wing. Proud boys. Stand back and stand by. Stand back. Stand by. Stand by part is dumb. But he said stand back like the guy said. He asked him to say stand back because he has already disavowed the KKK and the white supremacists already to the same guy. And instead of understanding that, people go, oh, now it's a civil war. Oh, this man, he's calling on more violence. He told him to stand down. Something's wrong with you. And then we take it even further. So we didn't saw this man disavowed him all these times. You would then go, well, how in the world would anybody say that he isn't disavowing them? Who else would say that? None other than. The president of the United States in the year of our Lord 2020 refuses to condemn white supremacists. And the reason. How? And y'all supporting this person. The reality of this is that we are talking about an election in 27 days where last week the president of the United States took a debate stage in front of 70 million Americans and refused to condemn white supremacists. This is not the reality of the situation. Not true. And not true. He's he telling the truth for a change. And not true. It wasn't. Why do you have to only be a Republican to understand this? This is coming from an independent, true life independent. Like he didn't have a chance. He didn't do it. And then he doubled. Like he didn't have a chance. The Joker has said it so many times. Oh, wait, what was she about to say? Double down. And then he said, when pressed, stand back. When pressed? No, he was asked to say. And to say that they need to stand down. Stand by. And this is a part of a pattern of Donald Trump's. Now, we've seen the pattern, Joker, <laughs> and it's not the one you're talking about. Is he lying? Even the fly know you're lying, Joker. And these are three critical facts that you don't hear all the time that you need to understand what's going on. Number one, the KKK is a Democrat creation. The only reason why the KKK was created was to take back the black vote. The original civil rights movement had the free slaves holding office, but they were holding office as Republicans. So in response to that, the Democrats created the KKK and was lynching people until they started to vote Democrat. And they did it over through generation, through generation, through generation, and it's documented. I've been talked about this already. Until eventually, now they don't have to kill you. They just have to Scare you with the boogeyman and say, oh, the KKK going to get you. And then this time you just vote Democrat. And how that works is by an association, which is why number two, COINTELPRO is still here. COINTELPRO is what they use to get Martin Luther King killed, Malcolm X killed. And they had agents pretend to be activists and they set up the people who's trying to do the real changes. They labeled them as the next black messiah. This is what the FBI was talking about. That's why they didn't like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. And the Black Panthers. So now the current day COINTELPRO people are like those ones who you hear talking about the flat earth. They're pretending to believe in the flat earth to discredit people who are actually giving out the facts. Say, for instance, what I'm talking about right now. They would then try to associate themselves with the types of stuff I talk about. So then you would think we're in the same category. And of course, the news plays along with this. It is very similar to the way Pepsi sponsors the Super Bowl. All the people who like the Super Bowl, they see Pepsi. They hope people like Pepsi as much as they like the Super Bowl. But it's the opposite in that, oh, they hope people that don't like uh, the flat earthers and people talking about Mandela effect and, and KKK and all this type of stuff. They would also not like people talking about what I'm saying, which is freaking reality. So it puts it more in the context what's happening when you understand that number three David Duke and the Proud Boys are COINTEL Pro. Quote from David Duke. We are determined to take our country back. We are going to fulfill the promises of Donald Trump. 
He knows what that means when he's saying it. He knows that he is a KKK person and he knows the perception of the people. So he know if he associate himself with Donald Trump, then you will then have that view of Donald Trump. He don't give a crap. He know what he's doing and the news know. The same way as Gavin McInnes, the founder of Vice Media, faking like he supports Donald Trump and then also coming out here talking about all this violence. This is how the game goes. The media plays along with it. But you need to be smarter than that. And it's one thing to be confused because COINTELPRO is being put into play and the news is playing along with, with the association of David Duke and these other pretenders. But it's another thing, and I'm not excusing you on this, for blatantly overlooking the racism of Joe Biden and how he calls Robert Byrd, KKK member, a friend, mentor, and a guy. As also noted, Robert C. Byrd was a parliamentary library, a keeper of the institution of the Senate, and he was the institution itself. But to me, and many people here today, like guys I see, Bill Bradley and Jim Sasser, who long left the Senate for greener pastures, and I hope better remuneration. We used to kid about that too, but I, uh, for a lot of us, he was a friend and he was a mentor and he was a guy. Now, before you start making a little stupid excuses, you know, if Trump said that it'll be all over, you would be outraged and saying this and that. The only thing I see you doing is endorsing Biden.